Good evening. Welcome to this special edition of the Sinister Seymour Show, honoring the life and legacy of Larry Vincent in what would have been his 97th birthday. Now, here he is, your host for this episode, Ben Thompson. <laughs> hey folks, well you're probably expecting Seymour to come out from behind the slimy wall right about now, but unfortunately he won't be here for this episode. As you heard in the intro, today is a very special day. 97 years ago today, Larry Vincent was born in Massachusetts, who would later go on to play and create the character of Sinister Seymour. Even though this show was started as a tribute series to him, today we wanted to do something extra special to commemorate his life and legacy on such an important day. We have all sorts of people who watch this show, some of which who were original fringies in the 1970s. We also have people who have found the show because of Not Scary Farm or all sorts of other things. Perhaps this is maybe even be your first time watching this show. Regardless of where you came from, there's one question you probably all might have. Who is Sinister Seymour? And who is the man who created him? Who was Larry Vincent? On June 14th, 1924, Larry Francis Fitzgerald Vincent was born in Boston, Massachusetts. He left home to pursue a career as a professional actor, gaining a start as an understudy for none other than Kirk Douglas. Excelling in comedy, Larry had a natural knack for the kooky, absurd, and comical. Larry moved to Indianapolis in the 1960s to host as Captain Star on WFBM-TV's children's programming, hosting live skits for an in-studio audience, followed by Three Stooges shorts. Let's go inside. You mean clear inside, inside the door by those skeletons, That's these right. skeletons right, right there? Go hello, ahead. hello, fellas. <laughs> hey, right? I'll tell you what, I'll go in first. I will go in and then you come in after me, oh, all right? Oh, yeah. Sure, well, okay. I'll show you there's nothing to be afraid. Larry made a move to Los Angeles after his time on WFBM, where he then made a career of making appearances on numerous television series, including The Flying Nun, Mission Impossible, Good Morning World, uh, here are the invoices, Mr. Stewart. Harry, we should have a talk. Maybe we ought to cut back on the Spanish Contemporary and put some more of the boys on Hacienda. Oh, boss, that might be a big job. But it might make sense. Oh, look, don't do it on my say-so. Uh, I'm one store. <laughs> yeah, but Pomona's always been a trendsetter. Glad you came in. We'll talk later, Harry. And even I Dream of Jeannie. In 1968, he became staff director at KHJ, Channel 9 in Los Angeles, a channel that was, at the time, experimenting with new and cutting-edge programming. And from Larry's creative mind, KHJ was about to get one of their most famous characters of all time. Around the same time, Larry began a side hustle as a whore host, mocking horror and sci-fi B-movies through his hilarious commentary. Larry's agent, Gary Blair, would book theaters all along Southern California where Larry's new character would give live commentary. The act became an instant hit, and thus the macabre character, donned with a black cape and a wide brim fedora, rose to fame. Sinister Seymour was born. By 1970, KHJ had brought the show onto television, where Seymour's offbeat humor instantly became a hit with those up late enough to watch. Okay, dummies, February 5 at 5 o'clock, I'll be right here on 5 with some real bombs. You'll like them, I won't. Let's take a look at a couple of them together, shall we? First we have, ha, ah, the incomparable Neanderthal man. Right here on 5 at 5, February the 5, and clean this place up. Seymour was a local celebrity in Southern California now, and his newfound fans, or fringies as he'd like to call them, were eager to line up and meet him. Because of this, Gary Blair was now looking for new and hopefully larger venues for Seymour to meet his fans. Just two years after KHJ started airing Seymour's Monster Rally, Larry left them for a far better deal with the much larger and more dominant television channel, KTLA, Channel 5. Larry continued the show on KTLA, now under the name of Fright Night. Larry enjoyed the television format, which did offer him a lot of creative freedom, yet he still enjoyed engaging with his fringies at live events, which at this point, Gary Blair was still actively lining up for Seymour. 
On Halloween Day, 1971, Seymour made his first theme park appearance, where he hosted a meet and greet at Universal Studios in Hollywood, California. But Universal didn't have the large screen and indoor theater that was desired to host Sinister Seymour. In 1972, Gary Blair made a call to both Magic Mountain, which had a large outdoor theater, as well as Knott's Berry Farm, which held a much more desirable new indoor theater with a large screen and a water curtain. Over at Knott's Berry Farm, Bill Hollingshead received a call from Gary in September of 1972. With less than a month to Halloween, there was not enough time on Knott's End to prepare for such an event. Bill told Gary to call back in the spring of next year to arrange for a Halloween event in 1973. So for the 1972 season, Seymour's Halloween Spooktacular was put on the last week of October in Magic Mountain, featuring a movie screening with Seymour and a pumpkin carving contest put on by the park. However, being a daytime event, the bright environment was less than desirable for Seymour's dark demeanor. As promised, Gary Blair gave Bill Hollingshead a call in spring of 1973 regarding the possibility of a Halloween event to be put on at Knott's Berry Farm, and preparations soon ensued. Despite the majority of the Knott family being opposed to the idea, Walter Knott overruled them and agreed to have the event put on. The last weekend of October was chosen for the event, and the $4 tickets quickly sold out. Hi, Bridgie. Seymour here, and I've got a swell deal for you. October 26, 27, and 28, I'll be at Knott's Berry Farm's spookiest, eeriest Halloween hunt ever to hit Southern California. Knott's is completely, I mean completely, transforming their funny farm into the eeriest place you'll ever experience. And here's the real spooky special. On Friday, Saturday, October 26 and 27, from 6 to midnight, six spooky hours of unlimited use of all attractions for only four bucks, if purchased in advance. And that includes me, Fringies. Don't miss Knott's one-of-a-kind Halloween hunt. The event was unlike anything Knott's had done before. Seymour was set to perform live shows in the John Wayne Theater, and thereafter meet some of his fringes. Knott's got all in on the act and decorated all of their ghost town and encouraged employees to dress up in costumes, walk around characters featuring Planet of the Eight Mask, roam the streets, and even concessionaires were invited to join in on the fun. Bud Hurlbut, owner and designer of both the Calico Mine Ride and Log Ride, went all out in retheming his attractions, and even dressed up himself in a gorilla suit and scared guests who ventured inside his mine ride. The three-night Halloween haunt saw an overwhelming turn, with every one of Seymour's shows packed. With his staggering success, Knott's immediately agreed to do the Halloween haunt once more a second year in 1974. They improved and expanded their theming and decor, and it was planned to be another success for both Knott's and Larry Vincent. But unfortunately, fate took a turn for the worst. Larry Vincent was diagnosed with stomach cancer, which took a serious toll on him. Larry was often in the hospital, yet despite this, still made an effort to please his fans as Seymour. For the 1974 haunt, Seymour was driven to Knott's from the hospital just hours before the show started. Despite his dire condition, Seymour graced the stage of Knott's Berry Farm once more. His fans had no clue the battle he was facing. They also didn't know that this would be the last time Larry ever played Seymour. In March of 1975, and at only 50 years old, Larry Vincent succumbed to his stomach cancer and passed away in the hospital leaving behind his wife, children, and a legacy that would last many years to come. And here we are almost half a century later, almost 50 years since Larry Vincent has passed, and almost a century after he was born. And yet his legacy still stands the test of time, stronger than ever. Many of his original fringes from the 1970s still remember him fondly, and now communicate with one another online, sharing memories of watching his show. The Not Scary Farm Halloween Haunt, which began in 1973 solely out of Larry's desire to host such an event, still goes strong and now has a huge fan following. In fact, Not Scary Farm may have started the entire haunt industry as we know it today, so perhaps none of this may have existed if it weren't for Sinister Seymour. In the 1980s, Fright Night was revived once again, now with Elvira as a host, who became successful in her own right. And in 2019, Seymour made a cameo appearance in Quentin Tarantino's film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, in which he appeared both on a billboard at the beginning of the film, 
as well as on the television towards the end of the film. And then of course comes the subject matter of this series. I created this YouTube series almost a year ago, meant to be as a tribute to Larry Vincent, as well as his character of Seymour, and hopefully spread that legacy to newer generations. Now we are going to discuss with some of the cast what it means to be able to continue that legacy and hopefully preserve it for future generations, as well as what they would like to say on Larry's 97th birthday. Okay, today I have with me some very wonderful people from the crew. I have Mr. Daniel Lara over here, who's our lead writer. Uh, on the First off, I'd like to just kind of say, um, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a challenging project to pursue. A lot of people have very fond memories of watching Seymour growing up, and it is a very uh, iconic character. So, you know, how do you ensure that the character is uh, uh, portrayed properly? I make sure to portray Seymour as accurately as he has been portrayed back then. I make sure he's a bit of a grump because that's what he's always been known as a bit of a grump. And I know one big thing with him, especially with things like Not Scary Farm or Halloween Haunt, is that he contains a bit of a horror element. So with that, I contain usually some horror jokes or some even sometimes, much like the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. That's good. That's very good. Um, you know, and like I said, it is an icon iconic character. A lot of people do have fond memories of him. And it is challenging at times to ensure that we do this properly. It's a, it's a very daunting task. Uh, what do you hope the future for this project ensures? And how do you hope that, you know, this legacy may possibly grow over the next few years or... You know, what do you hope the younger generation gets out of watching this that they, you know, may take from learning from Seymour and, you know, the legacy of Larry Vincent? How do you hope that this uh, show will hopefully, you know, uh, introduce Seymour to a new generation? I hope for one of two things. I hope that the kids that watch the show are get curious who Larry Vincent was or who Mr. Seymour was. And look into it and look at the what he did before and all the things he helped out with and was a part of. Or that, or and that they enjoy what we make. Um, good. Get a laugh out of it or maybe even learn something. Absolutely. I'd also like to, you know, mention the fact that this, this show has been going on for so far. Uh, about a year. So I started working on this project a couple of years ago in hopes that it would, you know, well, well, actually, I found out about the character of Seymour about roughly over five years ago. The first time I went to Not Scary Farm, I had no clue what to expect. So I, you know, I went in and immediately fell in love. And from then, I wanted to learn as much as I could. And that's, of course, how I initially <laughs> found out about Seymour through, you know, online and history books and stuff like that. And from there, I wanted to learn more. And as I saw the few clips that are online of him, it's, it's a very interesting type of humor. And I was thinking, you know, it's, you know, it's such an iconic character. And it's, it's a shame that, you know, it's not very well represented. I mean, you had that reference in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but there's nothing really out there. It's not as iconic as, you know, say Elvira. And I wanted to, I was yeah. thinking, you know, I want to do something that could hopefully, hopefully uh, introduce Seymour to a newer generation. So I thought about it for a year. And I came to the conclusion that, you know, Seymour had a very quick-witted uh, humor and it was, you know, very smart. And I was thinking, you know, you couldn't do horror hosting on, say, YouTube or anything far too long. I don't think it would let you upload something that long. But I was thinking, you know, talk show uh, hosts, talk show formats are, you know, very quick pace, quick pace timing. And I thought if Seymour was to make a return in some form, that would be a good format. So I thought I'd do, you know, a talk show featuring Seymour so we could have that same type of quick-witted humor and you know I worked on it for roughly about a year and I thought you know when I was because I wrote the, the very first episode and from there uh, Daniel you came in and did all the other ones but for the first one I analyzed as much of the existing footage as I possibly could of what did exist and tried to hopefully replicate that humor as best as I could and by the time I finished that script that's when we started filming we brought Caleb in and all that and from there I decided mm -hmm. I want to make it into a full series and 
you know, so that's that's kind of how I got started on this. I wanted to do it as a tribute to Larry Vincent and, you know, of course, the character of Seymour. And I just wanted to do something that would hopefully introduce it to a newer generation because it is a very unique character. It's a very unique show. And it's, you know, it's wonderful. Younger generations hopefully should learn about this. And I hope they do find enjoyment in it. So uh, what's your story of, you know, how did you get involved with this? And what are your thoughts on how it's progressing so far? I knew about Seymour from before. I ran across him one day on the internet and I'm, I learned how he had a big impact with Halloween Haunt and helped with the creation of that, which I love Halloween Haunt. So I just, wow. Didn't know he helped out creating that. It's such a big thing today. Absolutely. And as well as his show, which has some pretty great humor. And one day I saw online that you were looking for someone to help you out with the script. So I hit you up and I sent you what I had already made before, right? Yep. And here we are now. All right. And one last question. Um, if Larry Vincent was alive today, or if you could say anything to him, if you had the opportunity, well, what would you say to him? I would say, I'd probably geek out for a minute and say you are such an awesome spooky guy and give him a big fat thank you for creating Halloween Hot. All right. Thank you for doing this with us and, you know, being a part of this project as a whole. It's been an honor to work with you and uh, thanks. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> Look forward to hopefully continuing this and growing it in the future. And I hope people who have been watching or maybe even starting watching now, I hope they enjoy it. I hope they, you know, find an interest in Seymour and I hope they learn about the legacy of Larry Vincent. So I'd like to end with that and say thank you. And I hope you guys have a good night. Good night, guys. Well, I was flabbergasted uh, because I was a fan of your show. And what I loved about watching your show is that it's not so much the movies that you were screening, but I couldn't wait to come back to uh, you ragging on the films. And um, it was in the early days of Knott's Berry Farm uh, when they made the Knott's Scary Farm. I think it was in the very first few years. And, um, you know, I live not too far from Knott's Berry Farm. I mean, literally, I could walk there if I wanted to. And uh, across the street was the, uh, they had this um, alligator farm and they had all kinds of other stuff going on. And it's, it was a much different place uh, than it, it, it was a much different amusement park than it is today. It was more, uh, uh, it's more low tech. It was, it was more personable. And um, so when you showed up, there was, a, you know, I was too nervous to come up to see you, but you, uh, you did your shtick and we were just thrilled to death because we would see you on television. There, there you are live. And it was really great because a lot of the um, local broadcasters, either radio personalities or TV personalities, we do personal appearances. And it was always a big thrill. But for me, who I, my tastes have always been somewhat eclectic. To have you there was a great honor indeed. And I really appreciate you in life. It's always an honor to see Seymour in person. Remember, you've been on Fright Night on Channel 9. I know you. In fact, you even did work for KTLA. You know, KTLA was one of my favorite, um, uh, favorite TV channels. Yeah. Way back when we had Stan Chambers and Bill Welsh and... Uh, you guys were doing roller derby. We had ladies roller derby. I mean, this is, this is really interesting stuff to watch on KTLA. Uh, Dick Lane did the, uh, he did the wrestling all the time. So KTLA was, was a really, really neat place. So I'm glad you had a good home there for a few years, right up into the, the mid, uh, mid seventies. So, uh, I kind of miss you. But, and um, I don't know what kind of plants did you plant? Uh, I went up on your wall that you had, because uh, they were really awful looking. I think the leaves had turned into slime or something because it just looks like who would have a 
slimy place like that, you'd, you'd, you'd appear and talk to people. That's, uh, man, you had a hard time in those days. Oh, oh, oh yes, the, the bomb word, yes, yeah. I, yeah, you used that an awful lot. That, uh, in fact, I think you, you thought they came off an assembly line because it was like, you know, they're just rolling B bomb movies one after another. They never gave you a good one, did they? Never a good one. Larry Vincent was beyond a talented man whose work forever changed the television industry and played an integral role in creating the haunt industry. Everybody here at the Sinister Seymour Show would like to wish him a very happy 97th birthday. Thank you for touching our lives with your creativity. And to all you fringies watching at home, we'd like to wish you a very bad evening. And now it's time for what I know you've all been waiting for. A little fanfare, please. Thank you. Yes, it's time to squawk back, where you dummies get a chance to wear your squawks. The only feature of this kind on any horror show in the nation. Alive and unrehearsed, on tape, uncensored. All right, sir, will you step right up and let's hear your squawk. Moving right along here. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Sophomore. That's Seymour. I agree. Huh. However... Oh. However... Just move right along, sir. However, I've been watching your show for some time now. <coughs> and mm. I think your views on horror films are slanted. Slanted! Could you just give us the important point, sir? We have so many other guests and they're all waiting to squawk back. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the way that you treat your helper, Eugenski, is cruel and inhumane. Well, I... And you mm. have no respect for great films like The Headless Ghost, really? Monster and the Girl, and The Astounding She-Monster. Sir, I'm terribly sorry, but we're running out of time. Could you come back again next week, sir? <sighs> I doubt if I'll be around next week. Well, I'm sorry, sir. We'll have to move along. <laughs> and that's it, folks. That's all for tonight. They're taking us right off the air. But join us again for Squawk Back, the only feature of this kind on... T Excuse me. Uh, Seymour here? Oh, George, how are you? It's George Putnam. You just saw the show. Sure, you can use it any time. Yes, I agree. You have more control over the show. Well, it's very simple, George. You just pull the lever. You know, if anybody gives you an argument, and down they go.